We're celebrating our 20th year. It was a dream of mine. Scary because we didn't know what we were doing, but we, we learned along the way. When we first opened the door, we wanted to provide a place where anybody could go. The construction worker and the lawyer could sit at the same place and just have a good time, have a good meal, you know, something for the community where anybody is welcome, it's comfortable. Going into February, we were on track to have our best year ever. We had uh, the igloos, which was our savior. It allowed us to extend our patio life a little longer uh, season. When we were told in the beginning, um, we didn't know what to expect. We chose to shut down completely. We felt even doing takeout would have put somebody in jeopardy, so we decided to shut, shut down completely. My daughter's preconditioned. We took it very serious. If I came down here, you know, I was taking my clothes off at the door and taking a shower before I picked her up. And that's how far we took it. And we did that for a couple weeks. But I couldn't figure out how I couldn't open my business in the United States of America. And I saw other businesses open. We started getting nervous when 15 days turned into 30 days, which turned into 60 days turned into almost 90 days. With the restriction, it, it made us have to redesign the way we did things. Sacrificing quality of food, put in a takeout container. Uh, some things didn't travel well, some things do travel well. You know, just the gamut. We had to be creative of how we were able to do business and how to generate income with nobody coming indoors. I remember coming in here and watching cars go by and wondering how we couldn't open and seeing the amount of traffic <laughs> that was coming through town and being uh, dumbfounded, right? Um, I come in here and see, you know, the dining room empty and the chairs tipped over and feeling like my business got gutted overnight. Um, it was surreal, you know? Um, took 20 years to get to where we were and Almost overnight, it got taken away. And not by a bad decision <laughs> on our behalf. Uh, that's the kicker. I, we've made bad decisions in business and, and we're able to correct it. We had no choice in this. We were able to get the PPP money, which enabled us to spend it uh, and bring people back. We had an eight week period to send 75% of that on payroll. So we were paying employees extra to come in and stand around essentially. <laughs> At the seventh week of PPP money, they extended it to 24 weeks where you could use it. So we were already in the position to have it gone. <laughs> and uh, it would have been nice if we knew it was gonna be a 24 week period. Uh, we could have spent it wiser and it really benefited us when we were open. We got uh, uh, the EI, uh, EIL loan, I think it is, uh, which is a, uh, it's a low interest grant through the uh, Small Business Association. So we did, we applied for that also. We got that. So those two alone is what's kept us in, in the game. I had to turn into a takeout place overnight. It's not what we're meant to be. You know, you're meant to experience State Street Grill, not get it in a to-go bag. So to redesign ourselves and do all that is, you know, we did it. You know, we got to the other, we're, 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 we're trudging, but it doesn't feel good. <laughs> you know, that didn't feel good at the time. We were getting momentum. And every time we got momentum, we, get, we got pulled back and got more restrictions. I think that happened two or three times to us throughout. And it was, you know, another gut check. Uh, the week of Thanksgiving makes or breaks you for the month of November and the holiday season keeps you in the game for December, January. Our industry, we're on eight to 10% margins. You're just kind of constantly rolling, right? You have to throw fires in the log to keep this momentum going. So when you suffocate it, you know, just to open the doors, we had to jump through hoops and, and, and do a whole series of, of things by the government. Uh, it's not like we can't figure them out. We actually figure it out within three hours with the new regulations when we first opened, what we needed to do. We had our floors mapped, 
We had our uh, signs up, we had our sanitized stations out, you know, our sprays everywhere. It took three hours to figure out what his regulations were. To be told that we wouldn't know how to handle this kind of situation. And then and you see the other businesses able to, to operate, especially the big box stores. I said it to staff members. I said, it's hard for me to come in here and watch my business get gutted from the inside out when we didn't do anything. It wasn't uh, a decision on our behalf to do that, right? So it's it's infuriating. It's, um, it's yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, how could a box store open and uh, my wife wait two hours in line at Target, but I can't open a, uh, a 50 seat restaurant, you know? How do I come down here and stare out the window and see 20,000 cars a day go by in Clark Summit and I can't open my restaurant. That was devastating. And I probably went into a state of depression to some extent. <laughs> I was not here much during the summer months and, and spring. Uh, I couldn't go into the restaurant and watch it die. You know, that's what it felt like. I like the thing was, I was going down, you know? The newest round of closing us till after January 4th, um, again, you just took money out of waitresses and waiters and bartenders. You just, you, you just took it right before the holidays. Um, and there's no relief for them. We developed a program here at the restaurant where we're selling gift cards and you could tip it forward. So you buy a $100 gift card, you pay 120 of it, your tip's covered for that next next time you use it, and we're giving that twenty dollars to our servers now. Um, you know that's how I can help my bartenders and my servers right now, because um, that's the ones I truly feel bad for. My staff is single moms or college students or married couples that count on the second income. To have this right now is it's rough, you know. I wasn't here to lead during the hardest part because I couldn't come in because I couldn't watch. And I think a leader's there thick and thin. So I feel a, a couple months there, that, that summer period, I wasn't on the ship when it was going down, you know? Uh, and I feel like I failed in that area, absolutely. And I don't know what I was looking for, you know? I just knew if I went in my my energy going in that place was not going to do anybody any good so i stayed away and that's kind of I, my justification for it you're better off not there because you're going to be flinging your negative energy on all of them and they certainly don't want to be there probably any more than you do and they were they you know so yeah so it was it was difficult it's it's heartbreaking to see restaurants competitors go out of business heart and soul into a restaurant, you know, like that's, I feel bad even for them, for, I don't know, um, gyms, hair salons, restaurants. We do it because we love it and because we know it. I certainly don't do it for the pay and the hours and the things that I've lost along the way, uh, sacrifices you make, but you do it because you love it. And I think if you're if you work hard at it with a little luck, you do well. I had a friend who owns a carpet place. He told me he couldn't sell his carpets. Uh, the same product is being sold at Home Depot, but he couldn't sell his because he couldn't open. Uh, that doesn't make sense, you know? Why? <sighs> Not in the United States of America. To be told you can't open your establishment by no wrongdoing of your own. Uh, it, it, it's infuriating, you know? Um, it, uh, you hear those stories over and over. Uh, and then you look down your, your, your town and you see three or four stores closed up during this period that had the same product that was being sold at the big store, you know? Or online. They were able to do business, you know? So why weren't we? Why was small business any different than big business? Because 
all industries in the big business were still going. It was only the small businesses that weren't moving. Gyms, hair salons, <laughs> restaurants. Not just us. It's not just the restaurant business, you know? Small businesses. I don't think the public fully understands the restrictions that small businesses are under. You know, they get the six feet, they get the mask. There's a hell of a lot more to it than just six feet and a mask from our, in our industry. Cleaning, wiping, menus, paper have to be thrown away. You know, there's just a lot more restrictions on us than just the six feet and a mask. We've been sprayed with the virus shield. They came and tested our readings. We've, we came in at a 242, which industry standards is 500. And we were still below that. With COVID, they've lowered the restrictions. So we had to come in at a 150 or, or lower. We were at a 26 rating for sterilization in my kitchen and in all my high touch areas and in my uh, igloos. The guy, when he left that night after he did his spraying and testing, he said, you're about as clean as a uh, operating room. We figured out the first set of restrictions. The masks, we can do that, you know? The social distancing, we can do that. Other than that, it's no different than being in a supermarket, a Home Depot or a Lowe's, a Target. You know, if they're doing that, you can do that in a small business. So let us, let us fight, you know? We're fighting to save our business and our families. Be open to new ideas. Be open to opening your mind up a little bit, you know? Be open to not listen to one narrative and listen to multiple before you make your own decision. And do some research. Do certain things, get certain inspections, play by these guidelines, you're good. And we did that. And then uh, nine months later into a 15 day shutdown, we're still in this, we're no farther along than we were, you know? I question a lot of that.